At the T-minus three-minute mark, tape recorders on board the spacecraft were turned on. These recorders record both voice and data. This is WOMM LP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 The Radiator. It's a rocket shop. Good evening. I'm your host, Tom Proctor. And with me tonight is Thomas Gunn. How's it going? Good. How are you, Tom? I'm pretty good. Uh, we always like kicking it off with a song. So what have you got for us? Uh, this is a song called Swim Into the Fire. Uh, there's a video. You can find it on YouTube. And uh, yeah. Sweet. Take it away. were a flower on the cover of an album from 04 The final hour was the most important detail we ignored An empty promise in a world of make-believe that I divide Now you shower Praise upon a partner in disguise Waiting tables in your memory I'll serve you truth to chase your every Just to watch you turn and serve another too So I lay be easy to endure How can I live my life when someone else is living it with you myself up out of bed another sunset and it's time to drown the pounding in my head I lie awake in purgatory just to find an ending to our story as I scour every page in memory of them in the wrong direction based on your own point of view and though it kills you on the inside you can know that at the end of this reflection you did the best that you could do so I lay my head on a pillow next to yours no one said this be easy to endure How can I live my life 
And someone else is living it with you Did the best that you could do Something with Fire there by Thomas Gunn. That was uh that was, that was quite quite the tune. It was it got very fiery towards the end there. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the name I'm guessing. Yes, very, very much so. Uh, I uh the the swimming in the fire are kind of a, some astrological references in there, kind of, you know, ups and downs. Yeah. I mean, I, I've read and seen also on your uh, Instagram and a few of your YouTube videos, you are a very passionate singer. Um, is it the your kind of mood fits the music or the music fits your mood? What? It kind of it kind of changes depending on the song, really. It really is... Uh, I, I come at it more from... You know, I, I have a lot of... I have a lot of feelings. Uh, <laughs> But I, I've always been very passionate about the things I enjoy. I've always been very, you know, very, not so much loud, but very, you know, outspoken and, and in, in that way. And I definitely, um, and it, it just, the, these songs are just kind of my outlet for that. And um, it just kind of just kind of spills over, overflows. Um, yeah, but I, I I love that because you know when you see a passionate singer, you, you f- I feel like the crowd kind of gets on the gets brought in to the to the artist more and kind of feels what the artist feels a bit more than than a, than a singer that doesn't have that similar kind of uh, drive or passion. Yeah, I I credit a lot of that to my my theater background. I have a very long theater background and, and learning things like stage presence and and all that sort of stuff. It just kind of naturally. Kind of, I, I fell into that very naturally, and so it, it's translated very naturally to my musical style and and things like that. Hmm. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background. We've not had you on the show before, so yeah, what's uh, what's your story? Yeah, um, grew up homeschooled, and the oldest of seven. Uh, all of them are listening right now. Uh, <laughs> hi guys, I love you. Um, uh, moved around a lot, and uh, ended up in Vermont, and uh, just was into theater. And uh, because I was homeschooled, I was able to play music. You know, get all my schoolwork and chores done in the morning, and basically have all the afternoon to play music. And my siblings and I would play music together. And I like a, you know. a real kind of Jackson Five kind of thing going. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never really explored that too much. We all have very, very different styles, so trying to mesh that in every once in a while. Uh, Jackson has, Five without yeah. the child abuse. Right. Yes, yes, very <laughs> much so. <laughs> it's healthier. It's healthier. Yes. <laughs> Um, as you're the oldest of seven uh, and homeschooled, does that make you? Did that make you like the second dad in a way? Did you? Very, very much the third parent. I, I relate to that very, very much. Just keeping everyone corralled, keeping everything, everything together, kind of making sure, making sure. Excuse me, make sure everything's okay. You know, being that that sort of extra support. Uh, so you said all your all your kind of uh, so you say your siblings are quite musical as well then yes would, yeah would, absolutely. Would, is your parents also quite musical not at all are you serious not at all <laughs> oh so you just kind of skip that generation and yeah we we really musical. don't know where it came from but the all seven of us are each musical in in some way it's, oh wonderful. Yeah. And so you said these styles differ a lot. Have you guys ever tried to, as a seven piece, try and stick them together, or is it just not feasible? My baby sister, who is seven, her name's Emily. Hi, Emmy. And she very much wants that to happen, and like wants mom and dad to be involved too. And and it's it's very cute. So, mom and maybe. dad obviously just they not, they have to learn something okay, first. That's say triangle maracas. Something yeah. Simple. There we go. Yeah. Keep like keep it on percussion. Yeah. Um, well, wonderful. And so, um, how long have you been playing as a solo artist? Um, I mean, you're a fantastic keyboard player. Thank you. Uh, so, I'm assuming you've been you've 
played in bands as well, or is this always been kind of a solo it's, effort? It's pretty much been a solo endeavor. I've been pretty much in the theater world for the last, since college and a few years after. Um, just been exploring the solo project, something I've always wanted to do for the last year and a half or so, but I've been playing piano since I was really, really little. And um, when did you start writing music? I started writing music probably when I was about 14 or 15. I think I I wrote... Uh, I wrote a whole bunch of like fantasy inspired stuff and like John stuff in on like the MIDI keyboard and, and all that. And you went off the prog rock end real quick. Oh yeah. Then, yeah. Oh yeah. Wizards yeah. And very much, very fantasy. much into Nightwish, very much into that whole European scene. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. Uh, so, but the you you started performing. Uh, what, what was the kind of impetus for taking? You know. Starting that writing and obviously you're very good at uh, keyboard and putting that uh, on stage and, and doing it in front of like a live audience was a was a spark that we were like actually I'm going to try and pursue this for, as a real thing. The the real spark I uh, uh, not to be a, a Debbie Downer but um, I went through a separation and a divorce over the last like year year and a half and when that first happened that kind of re sparked a lot of creative energy as one might expect um and it kind of i dug up a bunch of old stuff i'd written when i was in from homeschooling days and just kind of put it all together and i was like i i need to get this out here i need a kind of a, a vehicle for all of this all of this turmoil and it has developed into all sorts of things since but that's kind of the was kind of the original impetus and Having been in a place in the my theater work that I was able to actually make a little bit of extra time to create musically, it was also really helpful and convenient. Oh, wonderful. Um, do you mind me asking what kind of other uh, creative outlets did this go into? Um, not so much being angry about a certain person. Um, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, just exploring kind of different styles, different genres, um, having a bunch of different guests join me on the show and like doing stuff together and and um, learning a little bit more on guitar, which I'm hoping to play a little bit tonight as well. Um, and kind of just just exploring, just doing whatever I think you know feels necessary right. in, the, in the creative moment. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'd love to hear another song. Sure. Uh, would you like to give a bit of background on it? Yeah, um, this one is called Lipstick Ghost. Uh, it's one that started uh, very upbeat in a major key on guitar, and then things happened, and it became a weird minor key song on the keyboard. <laughs> um, just kind of on a whim at a show at Sweet Melissa's in Montpelier, and uh, my friends who were there, they really enjoyed it, so I'm like, all right, let's see where this goes. So this is Lipstick Ghost. When you're the ex-kid, unemployed, you wander aimless, paranoid. Where did all the confusion go? You're just okay, kid, you'll be alright, you got someone to share the night. Until the end of this human show. Nothing protects me from the freckles on her cheeks. Sometimes I feel a kiss is floating on my speech Oh, lipstick ghost See you spooking round your cryptic post Well, all your run around Why don't you run around with me? There's no Sephora to supply you with the horrors in my eyes Why is death hanging over me? You haunt me in the nicest ways With clever thoughts and a loving gaze How oh, I wish I could make you see well, Nothing protects me from the food stuck in her teeth when she moves through the walls, I laugh and cry in disbelieve. Whoa, oh, 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 lipstick ghost. See you spooking round your cryptic post. While well, I all run around, why well, don't you run around with me? Oh, lipstick ghost. Hear you checking on your nightly host. While well, I all run around, why well, don't you run around?
I won't bleed for you, won't bleed for you And nothing set in stone But if you haunt me all my days I worship at your throne I never leave you for my phone, no Your cryptic post While I all run around Why don't you run around with me Oh, lipstick ghost See you checking on your nightly host While I all run around Why don't you run around with me It goes uh, by Thomas Gunn. That one certainly had a musical flair to it. <laughs> so, uh, with the theatre work that you do, do you do, you do musicals? I, I have done a lot of musicals. Yeah. So, do you draw quite a lot from when your own writing from from theatre work? The there's definitely a lot of like deep rooted inspiration in there. Like I I used to listen to everything from the golden age of of uh, like Sound of Music and and all of that to. Like I am now in love with Hades Town. Uh, love a good Frank Wildhorn, Jekyll and Hyde. Um, just all, all of it, absolutely all of it. Uh, it certainly seemed to have that kind of as a sort of flair and uh, a narrative to it. Do you do you want to go into the song a little bit more? Uh, Lipstick Ghost is a interesting concept, and it? yeah, it there's definitely a story there. Yeah, um, it's definitely. It's definitely something I I did this I I sometimes will do these these doodles or little like snippets of of pieces that might like spark a story or spark something and I just had it up on my wall when I was practicing one day and I'm just like I'm going to write a song about this one and I knew that and like the like what does the imagery tell me and it like immediately caught on to that situation where oh I like feel this about this person of maybe they're like is there any sort of deception involved? But overall, like they're really great, and you know, and I really appreciate them. But part of me, you know, was when things were very new and things were very, very unstable. So I was mm-hmm. like, gotta be a little wary. But things are really good. So kind of, kind of touting that balance and playing with the the imagery and the language of you know ghosts and makeup and and all of that and. Yeah, I, I tend to wear a lot of makeup in my shows and stuff. So the, the also with the theatrical links there too. Yeah, so, kind of, yeah. Kind of works for the whole thing. Um, well, uh, actually, kind of brings me on to my next question in terms of uh, when you create a song, how do you go about crafting it? Is there a mood you need to be in? Is there a certain place you need to do it? Uh, what's what what's that spark creatively for you? Um, I have notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks of of like little lines and snippets, and I'll I'll take bits and pieces of some that work together. Um, and then start there as, as a core. And then usually I'm, I'm either at the counter at Down Home Kitchen in Montpelier, uh, one of my regular haunts for writing, or I'm at my family's homestead over in uh, Versher, just outside in the fresh air, just like bring my guitar or bring my notebook and just kind of have to be in that, that place of like peace, some sort of like familiarity to just be able to relax and, and f- kind of slip into that, that zone. I like to think of it as. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you know, did you grow up out in the countryside, or are you? You said you moved around quite. Yeah, a lot. we moved around quite a lot from like small cities to neighborhoods, but for the most part, towards like my teenage upbringing, we were out in the middle of nowhere, kind of four miles out down a dirt road. So I'd spend hours like walking up and down dirt roads, down rivers. Mm. Um, there's a lot of that sort of like nature sort of imagery that pops up in a lot of my work, um, and that is all from just like being outside all the time. It, yeah, you know. I was going to ask you how much of the geography kind of uh, changes the the songs that you write. But, very, very much. Yeah, yeah the, I I'm at home in the mountains more than anywhere else, and like that's and that's even more so starting to reflect uh, in the stuff I'm writing now. So yes, yeah, stylistically, um, you you've been writing since you were 14, and you know 
back in the Wizards and prog rock kind of days to, <laughs> to where you are now. How have you felt uh, your style has changed and where do you feel it's going from now, from this point? It's definitely, I don't know whether to call it mature. I don't know if that's a fair word to use, but it has definitely matured from where it was. Um, I'm definitely a lot more careful about my lyric choices. Uh, I've changed a lot as a person, too. Uh, I... I uh, I went from like homeschooled nerd to I mean still a homeschooled nerd but maybe a little bit more worldly uh, mm -hmm. in the sense and uh, just kind of gaining new perspectives on uh, life and things and yeah that that really has has affected the has affected my work uh, in positive ways uh, really taking the the time to be careful about. Uh, not being too not being too self-centered i i in the past have been a very self-centered person and i didn't like that about myself and so i've taken steps to to really not let that show in the lyrics um and in terms of um you know getting all this down have you if you got into the recording studio if you managed to if you got plans to do that what's there are, what's it looking like in terms of your own uh, next steps in in the you know musical uh, environment of Vermont. Yeah, so um, I have a couple of a few videos on YouTube. I have "Swimming with Fire," like I mentioned, um, uh, and a couple of guitar songs. Uh, one of which you did a music video with my brother uh, Nolan Gunn, who's a videographer down in Virginia. Um, you can check out his work too. Um, and uh, we have those on YouTube. Uh, and on my list of goals for 2019 is to record an EP. So there will be one coming down the line, probably sometime in the fall maybe early December or so. Uh, that's that's the plan right now. And how did you gather those songs together in the, as those particular songs? What what? I'm guessing you've got a trove that you can kind of pick from. So mm -hmm. what what made these particular songs that you are planning to record stand out for you? I, there are certain songs that I, I think everyone has a soft spot for every one of their songs, but I think in my own experience, there are a few that really stand out whether they're I think they're good whatever that means or if they're or they just really spoke to me in that moment and they've stuck like they've stuck through like I've I I've had a pretty consistent monthly show at Sweet Melissa's for the last year and a half and that's kind of been my kind of workshop to like work out a lot of these and the ones that have kind of stuck through since then are kind of the ones that I'm like okay let's do these you know I, I like the feel of these these feel good um it's kind of been a big like trial and error like in right on stage like in the moment like no you know no rehearsals no take backs like if it lands it lands if it doesn't it doesn't and uh, and it's been really a really moving experience to to work it out like that yeah it's yeah. got to be it's got to be kind of sometimes tough on the the old ego because especially when you mm -hmm. put something out there that doesn't really have the response you're expecting yes that has happened many times <laughs> But uh, but it's good, you know. It you know takes you know takes you back down a couple notches, which sometimes needs to happen, and and then you keep on trucking. Right. Yeah. Um, and we got about enough time to to plug away and uh, let us know wh where you're going to be playing next and um, where to find you on social media and all that jazz. Sure. Uh, you can find me on social media. Um, I'm on Instagram quite a bit at Thomas Gun Music. Uh, that's kind of the big one. Uh, I'm at Sweet Melissa's in Montpelier tomorrow at six. And then the big plug that I want to uh, mention here is the Somewhere Out There Festival in Worcester. Vermont, just north of Montpelier. It's August 17th. You can camp. It's going to be awesome. There's a ton of bands from the Montpelier Central Vermont scene. Uh, Bishop LeVay, who will be on soon, he's also playing that festival. Uh, come on out. It's going to be a really, really good time. Uh, posters are coming up soon. There's an event on Facebook. You can go to at Somewhere Out There Music on Facebook to check it out. See all the bands that are playing. It's going to be a really good time. It's a third year running, and uh, it's all for charity. We're raising money for, I believe we picked uh, the Young Center to help with uh, kids in detention facilities on the southern border. Yeah, and I actually went to that festival last year, and mm -hmm. it, uh, I just want to put a second shout out to somewhere at that festival. Fantastic festival. The guy who runs it, Josh, yep. absolutely killer dude. Like, really love that guy. Josh is good people. Uh, he is indeed. And uh, as you said, all for charity. Uh, he does not make a single penny from it. In fact, he loses a substantial sum from it. Yes, it's true. Um, but uh, he does it out of the goodness of his heart and because he loves the music and loves his community. So mm -hmm. another shout out for somewhere at the festival. It'll be really great yeah. seeing you there. I'll be definitely going this year. Awesome, thanks. Um, yeah, we've got that time for one more song. So okay. what have you got for us? Uh, I'm going to switch over to the guitar and I'm going to play uh, a new one. It's uh, on YouTube. I just uploaded it uh, earlier this week. Uh, it's called uh, Rain Clouds, and it's kind of, uh, it's barely three or four weeks old, um, and it's kind of about 
how things should have been handled. All right. Yeah. Quick shot of vodka before you start. Oh yeah. <laughs> just my just my moonshine in the, <laughs> in the mason jar, you know. The classy move. I'm gonna get that gravelly voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. This is rain clouds. Clouds forming, the shelter up ahead. Don't hurt your head. Thunder crashes over the place you used to live. When the heat just wouldn't give And the flies, they got you good You're so misunderstood Feel the rain clouds for man Kiss the raindrops on her hair You don't have a lot of time left To see her stop and stare When the storm door closes The shadows won't be long So find where you belong But the flies, they got you good So misunderstood Feel the rain clouds for man Kiss the raindrops on her hair You don't have a lot of time left See her stop and stare Like an inchworm on his thread Hanging left for dead man When the rain falls on your head It's time to go to bed, man But the lies, they got you good You're so misunderstood Yeah, the lies, they got you good So misunderstood
Feel the rain clouds for man Kiss the raindrops on her You don't have a lot of time left to see her stop and stay. Thomas Gunn. Thank you so much for coming in. That was great. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at somewhere out there as well. Uh, coming up next, we've got Bishop Lively. Uh, Levey, sorry. <laughs> and uh, so... <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's the French. It, it, it's ruined for me. Um, <laughs> so we got Bishop Levey coming up in just a moment. So uh, hang around. We'll be right back in a minute. 